believe in yourselves, because we can do anything ourselves. Those were the words spoken by a young African leader who has become a symbol of change across the Sahel region. Captain Ibrahim Traoré, the head of state of Burkina Faso, did not just offer a message of hope. He delivered a challenge, a challenge to the youth of his nation to stop waiting for outside solutions and to start building their own, to think boldly, to create bravely, and to do so with the resources they already had. It turns out, some young Burkina Bay took his words very seriously. In a modest workshop tucked away in Ouagadougou, two young men with nothing more than recycled parts, a few local tools, and a lot of determination began building something that once seemed impossible in their country drones. Not imported. Not assembled from kits. But built, designed, and tested right there. By their own hands. Their work is not just about machines that fly. It is about what those machines represent a new chapter for Burkina Faso. A story where young people do not wait to be given tools, but become the ones who make them. A movement driven not by money, but by belief. The belief that with knowledge and purpose, a small team in a small room can create something big enough to change a nation. But this story does not begin with technology. It begins with vision. Captain Traoré's vision of a Burkina that no longer depends on foreign aid or imported innovation. A nation that stands tall by standing on its own two feet. From the moment he assumed leadership in 2022, he called not only for a political revolution, but for a scientific and industrial one as well. He asked tough questions in public forums. Why had others mastered engines, refined fuel, and built empires of innovation? While Africa remained a consumer, were they smarter than us? His answer was always clear. No. What they had was belief and discipline. And now, it was Burkina Faso's turn. Today, that vision is starting to take shape not in boardrooms or foreign factories, but in the hands of young Burkina Bay, who took a leader's words and turned them into wings. In a neighborhood where most workshops are known for fixing bicycles or welding metal gates, one small garage stood out for a different reason. Inside, the air smelled not of oil and grease, but of determination and innovation. It was here that Trower, a young man with no university diploma, and his partner, Tos Intigar, a self-taught computer engineer, began building something no one believed possible, a drone, not just one, but several models. And they were not copying anything. They were creating from the ground up. Trower had always been fascinated by flight. While other kids were playing soccer in the dusty streets, he was drawing wings and watching birds. Without access to advanced textbooks, he studied whatever he could find online, often in French, sometimes in English, about aerodynamics, lift, thrust, and stabilization. He learned to calculate wing geometry using free software and adapted his designs based on what materials were available at local markets. Tous, on the other hand, Focused on programming and electronics, he had a talent for understanding how machines communicate. With old circuit boards and a lot of patience, he began building the systems that would guide their drones through the sky. He worked on integrating location tracking modules, creating ground control software, and developing cameras that could process images using artificial intelligence. Their first drone was unstable. It could barely stay in the air for more than 30 seconds. But it was theirs, and they improved, again and again. Eventually, they created three different types of drones. The first was named Kua 88. 
It was a lightweight drone used for scouting and inspecting terrain. The second was Koka 88. It was larger and could fly higher, designed for aerial surveillance and observation. The third drone, called Piga, was more specialized. It had a sensor pointing down toward the ground, capable of detecting metal. Its mission was to help identify hidden explosives, such as improvised bombs used in conflict zones. Each drone was built using local materials. From plastic wings shaped by hand to wooden launch frames crafted with care, everything was sourced and built in Burkina Faso. There were no international grants, no partnerships with foreign companies, and no expensive imported parts. Just hard work, skill, and belief. They believed their country had the right to create and protect itself with its own technology. And with that belief, two young men gave Burkina Faso a new kind of freedom, the freedom to fly. The drones created by Trauer and Tuus were not built just to fly. They were built to serve. Each model they developed had a clear purpose and was tailored to meet real needs in Burkina Faso. While advanced countries used drones for luxury filming or entertainment, these young engineers focused on solving local problems. Their drones could map entire areas of farmland. With high-definition cameras and software powered by artificial intelligence, they could create detailed maps to help farmers understand the soil, plan irrigation, and detect plant disease. In a country where agriculture supports most of the population, this was not just helpful, it was transformative. Some drones were used for checking roads, bridges, and power lines. Instead of sending people into risky or hard-to-reach places, a drone could fly over and send back live video. This saved time, reduced danger, and allowed quick action in emergencies. But one of their most important breakthroughs was in security. The Piga drone, with a metal detector facing downward, was built specifically to locate improvised explosive devices. These hidden weapons, used by armed groups in rural areas, had caused great harm to both soldiers and civilians. With their drone, it became possible to scan large areas of ground without putting anyone at risk. The sensor could detect even small metal wires buried in the dirt. Trauer and Taos designed their drones to be smart. The onboard cameras were programmed to recognize shapes, patterns, and changes in the environment. With enough training data, the drones could learn to tell the difference between a fallen branch and a suspicious object. This use of artificial intelligence turned their machines into flying assistance eyes in the sky that could think. What made their work even more impressive was how they built all this technology with local materials. The wings were shaped using hand tools. The bodies were molded from recycled plastic. Small motors were purchased and adapted. And everything from the software to the sensors was adjusted to work in Burkina Faso's harsh climate. The cost of building one of their drones was only a fraction of the price of imported models. Yet the impact was just as great. In a place where every dollar counts and every tool must prove its worth. Their drones were more than machines. They were solutions built by the people. For the people. The impact of Trauer and Tusa's drones was not limited to technology. It reached deep into the daily lives of people across Burkina Faso. In the countryside, farmers had long struggled with challenges like drought, poor soil, and lack of information. With these drones, they gained a new tool, one that could fly over large plots of land and show them exactly where to water, where to plant, and where to treat for pests. In the past, such decisions were based on guesswork or expensive outside advice. Now, thanks to these locally made machines, farmers could access real data about their own fields. Government agencies took notice, 
Eventually, drones were deployed in all 13 administrative regions of Burkina Faso for agricultural support. In one project alone, more than 1,000 hectares of farmland were mapped and analyzed. These efforts helped improve crop planning, reduced waste, and increased food security. The cost of doing this with imported technology would have been out of reach. But with drones made in Burkina, it became possible. This success also opened doors for young people. More students became interested in engineering and technology. New small businesses began offering drone services. A quiet wave of economic activity was set in motion all because two young men believed they could build something useful. But perhaps the most urgent use of their drones was in protecting lives. In recent years, parts of Burkina Faso have faced growing threats from armed groups who plant explosive devices on rural roads. These hidden dangers have taken the lives of both soldiers and civilians. The Piga drone, with its downward metal sensor, was created to address this deadly challenge. Rather than sending someone on foot to check a road, the drone could fly low and scan for anything unusual. It could detect wires, buried metal parts, or shapes that matched known explosive devices. This reduced the risk to human life and gave security forces a safer way to patrol dangerous areas. In a time when security and agriculture are both matters of survival, the drones built by Trower and Toos became more than tools. They became protectors. They offered hope not just through what they could do, but through what they symbolized that Burkina Faso could stand on its own, defend its people, and feed its families, using technology created by its own sons. As word of their drones spread beyond Ouagadougou, something remarkable began to happen. Other countries in the Sahel region started to pay attention. Burkina Faso is part of a growing alliance in West Africa known as the Alliance of Sahel States. Alongside Mali and Niger, the country has been working to strengthen its security and independence through regional cooperation. Technology especially drones, has become a key part of that effort. While wealthier nations often export their solutions to Africa, this time it was different. The innovation was coming from within, from Burkina Faso, from its youth. The drones built by Traoré and Tous were not just used for farming or border patrol. They became a symbol a message that even in a land often overlooked on the world stage. There was brilliance, courage, and a will to build. Their success inspired workshops in neighboring countries to start experimenting. It led to partnerships between drone engineers in Mali and Burkina Faso. It encouraged conversations about shared technology, local manufacturing, and regional pride. More than anything, it changed how people saw Burkina Faso. Once considered one of the poorest countries in the world, it was now seen as a place of innovation and possibility. This was not about replacing foreign technology. It was about proving that African nations could create, adapt, and lead their own future. The story of Trower and Tous also began to travel beyond Africa. Their images appeared in articles, their drones in video clips, and their story in classrooms. They showed the world that invention does not need luxury. It needs purpose. As we look to the future, these drones remind us of something bigger than machines. They are a reflection of what happens when leadership inspires, when young people believe in their country and when belief turns into action. Burkina Faso still faces challenges, but thanks to the spirit of its people and the vision of leaders who speak of self-reliance, the country has taken flight, not because someone gave it wings, but because it built them on its own. And if a small workshop in West Africa can build a future from plastic 
wires, and faith. Then perhaps there is hope for every nation still waiting for its turn to rise. 